Hi, this is Charlie Sutterfield. I'm going to walk you through the process of starting up Revit Architecture today and get you started on a small project. Um, first, what we'll do on this video is walk through the user interface for Revit Architecture. Revit Architecture is available from your start menu if you uh, click on the Windows button. And um, depending on how you how recently you, you've used it or um, how you've got things organized, um, you might have an All Programs button, and within the All Programs button, there should be an Autodesk folder. If you click on the Autodesk folder, then you've probably got a Revit Architecture folder within that. And then finally, the actual application Revit Architecture 2012 is the version that I'm using. I've already started it so that you don't have to watch that process, but that's where it's located. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize that on my screen. If you need to pause this video uh, while you get things up and running, I would suggest that. And then uh, come back when you've got a gray screen and it says Revit Architecture. Okay, so if you've got Revit Architecture up running for the first time, these boxes are going to appear a little bit differently for you. Uh, they're going to be sample projects and sample families across these. Uh, these are just shortcuts to recent projects of mine. And so if I wanted to go and work on, uh, say this one, the EPC Chapter 1 activity, I could just click on that. It's the same as what you would find in an Office document over here under the um, Program button. You can get to recent files that way. Well, uh, Revit Architecture puts them right there in front of you with a little graphics so that you can get there if you want to. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use this program button. In our case, it's the purple R for Revit. And we're going to click that uh, drop down there. And that gets us into the program menu. And it's kind of your standard selection of commands that are there. New, open, save, save as, etc., etc. There's one that will be important at some point in your Revit uh, career, which is licensing. Um, for instance, if you download a 30-day trial and then convert it into a three-year trial, uh, this is where you might need to go to enter your um, license information. So, but at any rate, um, I'm going to hover over this new button and then slide out to the right on this flyout menu and I'm going to go ahead and click on new project. So once I do that, I get this little window in the middle of my screen that says new project and that's the new project dialog. And what I want to do here is show you where the template files are. So let's click the browse button here. And that takes us to the US Imperial Library. Um, and we happen to be in the templates folder. And these templates are simply um, like blank documents that are set up with certain attributes so that it will save you a little bit of time when you're starting a project. So for instance, the commercial default template will have things preloaded into it like office furniture and drinking fountains and accessible parking spaces and things like that that you would typically find in a commercial um, environment. The residential default template will have things like uh, bedroom furniture, kitchen cabinets, landscaping, things that you would typically put into a residential project. The default template is the one that has the least amount of stuff in it. And if I expand this window a little bit and we look at um, the sizes over here on this right hand column, you'll see that the commercial has about 3700K, uh, residential almost 7000K of stuff. Now the the projects are exactly the same, they all work exactly the same way, it's just a different size because it's got more stuff involved in it already. If you use just the default fault template, you have to load all of that stuff instead. It's not preloaded for you, so that's the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the residential default, and I want to open one of those, so I'm going to click the open button. And that takes us back to this new project dialog box, and um, what's going on there, this template um, file has changed. You can't really see it because that window is not very big, but if I put my cursor in there and I um, scroll over to the right with my um, um, arrow button on my keyboard, then I can see where it says residential default. That's what's in there now. Uh, before it was just default, not residential. And then I'm going to create a new project, and that radio button is already selected for me, so that's good. I don't have to change anything there. And now I just click the OK button, 
and Revit's going to chug along for a second here, and then it's going to pop up with a blank project for me. Okay, and here we go. So, I wanted to walk you through the um, various ribbons and commands and things like that so that you can get an idea of how Revit is organized. Across the top here, this area, that's our shortcuts bar, and that's there all the time. Uh, you can add things to it. See this little drop down button here that I just clicked? Um, that quick access toolbar. I can add things to it, I can change things um, around, but that one's there no matter what screen we're in, that's always a constant. This next ribbon, oh, let's do the other side of this one. So um, over here, I've got the quick access to the help. Uh, files and Revit help is organized as a wiki and what that means is that it's a web-based help file and so if we type in something like uh, wall and click the search button it's going to open an Internet Explorer window for me here and it's going to take me to the Autodesk wiki and um, show us what the what the answers are so I've got a hundred results that popped up for uh, Revit 2012, that's my version, and it's going to show me wiki articles that are related to that. And if I'm, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these just to open it and show you what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this to take up the whole screen and scroll down just a little bit. And you can see the wiki structure over here on the left hand margin of this. And so it's going to tell me about walls and how they work and things like that. But more importantly, I can see, oh well, walls might be related to doors, might be related to windows and things like that. So there's a lot of stuff going on and I can use this as a way of exploring uh, Revit and, and how it works. So the wiki is actually an excellent tool, and um, as a help menu, this has come a long way in the last couple of years, so I'm very happy about that. I'm going to go ahead and close this web page. Um, I've got licensing information, subscriptions, all that kind of stuff is here as well on this uh, quick access menu. The next ribbon down is this dark ribbon that has tabs on it, starting with home, and then insert, and then annotate, analyze, and all that kind of good stuff. And those are always there as well. Those don't change. But as you can see, my content on the ribbon changes as I click on the various tabs. So this is my home tab. This is where I'll do most of my actual design work within Revit. And uh, this home tab includes things like walls, doors, windows, all of those things that we'll use to actually build our structure. Uh, some of them have drop downs, meaning that they're a little bit more um, selections that we can make if we want to. So this one is a good example, the wall command here. If I just click on wall, it'll work. And it changes my properties dialog box here um, to wall. And I can go out here and use my drawing tools. Uh, let me use this rectangle tool just so that you can see me change it. So I use the rectangle tool and I can draw a box and that box is made out of walls. Basic walls, six inch generic is what I used. Um, but back to that home tab, that wall command has a drop down, so I can always explore that as well. So wall is what I just used, structural wall is a little bit different, and then wall by face, and then once I have walls, I can do wall sweeps and wall reveals. So uh, feel free to explore those drop downs and see what might be available there for you. The other, the next ribbon that's in place here is the um, select, what I call the selector ribbon, they call it the modify ribbon. And um, let me click on one of these walls that I just placed and um, notice that that ribbon is not there um, with much detail to it. But if I go back to home and I click on wall again, notice I've got more selections here. So this is uh, intended to allow me to control how the wall places. And that'll all make sense. The more you use Revit, the more that'll make sense. Um, so back to the Home tab. Notice that my Modify Place Wall uh, tab is still here. Uh, so Revit allows me to uh, bounce back and forth between tabs if I want to, and um, which is actually kind of a cool thing sometimes. I'm going to click Modify to get rid of that. Okay, so these are my main tabs, my main ribbons. Over here on the left hand side, I have two windows that are open automatically. One is Properties, 
and the other is the project browser. The properties are just there to show you what the settings are for whatever it is that you're working with at the time. And so what does that mean? That means that when I'm out here and just clicking in this white space where I'm creating my project, my properties are all about the floor plan because I'm in a floor plan view. If I click on a wall, my properties are going to change. And so now I'm looking at properties that are for a basic wall generic six inch. Well, if I wanted to change that wall to something else, I just click the drop down here and I'm going to change that to exterior brick on wood stud, which is one of my first selections there. It's a little bit more complex. And so now my properties dialog is all about that. So I click on that wall, I get the uh, brick on wood stud. I click on this wall, I'm back to the generic six inch. Um, let's change this one down here to uh, wood siding on wood stud. So the property box changes depending on what I've selected out here.